Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I am down in Chatham, Ontario at the Pride Research Farm catching up with Pride Product Manager Matt Chappell. Matt, how's it going? It's going well, Vern. How about you? Uh, it's going good. I, I don't know so much about this moldy corn, and that's what we want to talk about today. Um, um, this season, a lot of moisture, a lot of people talking about the potential for ear rot, ear mold this fall. Um, you know, what do you see when you see this season? Yeah, I mean, it's always top of mind when we have a lot of humidity, we have a lot of moisture, especially at specific growth stages like R1, mm. when those soaks are popping out, right? We're always concerned about looking back in the rear view mirror and wondering what we could have done differently to mitigate our risk of ear mold in yeah. our corn crop. Let's take a look at what you guys have done here. Now, you, tell me tell me what's going on here. You've you've inoculated a bunch of ears in, in, in this trial um, with inoculum to sort of test, you know, that their susceptibility to ear mold and gibberella. Yeah, you got it. So part of a multi-year project burn where we take a lot of our commercial lineup and we look at a lot of new key commercial products or experimental products that are close to being at that right. you know level where we could take them to the farm and uh you know what we've done is we worked with albert tenuta and uh he's provided us with some uh some inoculum right. some some good product that we can go in and target that specific growth stage and inoculate plants and observe severity uh, and incidents and the percentage of ear infection that we see and how that uh, down the road transpires into overall dawn levels, the yeah. toxins that uh, we know that gibberella ear rot can produce in our grain. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's the key for a seed company like Pride and others, um, testing hybrids. Now, what are you looking for and how are you assessing these plants? Yeah, so we took a section in a row here, obviously, that we're demonstrating today, Burn, and we're really looking for, if we know we inoculated 20 plants here, Burn, we would look for a count of how many have signs of ear molds mm -hmm. and how bad it is, the percentage of that ear that is actually developed into ear molds from placing that inoculum yeah. on there. Of course, then within this same site, we have the rows that are not inoculated. Right. We have that natural infection under normal environmental factors with or without the presence of inoculum, right? Yeah. So uh, those comparisons are really key for us to understand genetic resistance or genetic tolerance right. to mitigating ear mold development. So Matt, tell us about what you're looking for. What sets a good hybrid with a good defense apart from a susceptible hybrid? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. A couple key things that we look at, you know, they're plant characteristics. One being husk coverage, Right. and the characteristics of grain dry down. I think a hybrid that is more likely to hold its ear upright later in the season through grain fill and into black layer stages mm -hmm. is obviously maybe more at risk if tough environmental conditions exist. Hybrids that tend to maybe droop the ear a little bit more horizontally into the roll and flare open the husk later in the season tend to have a little less susceptibility yeah. to doesn't mean they won't get infection burn, but it means that maybe they mitigate some of that really bad ear rot potential later in the growing season. And of course, we get into the month of September, we get fog, we get humidity, we're always at risk. Question for you, um, what's the difference between, you know, um, having a, a hybrid with good defense and then, you know, being stuck with one that, that's pretty susceptible? Yeah, a couple observations from, from many years of the, this trial and out there, you know, with customers has been uh, a hybrid that tends to have low uh, pressure, very good ear mold tolerance, is a hybrid really in our trials that doesn't have a lot of plants, when inoculated, doesn't have a lot of ear mold development on them. And then that transpires into relatively low dawn amounts in the grain, so low part per million at the end of the day, even under that inoculation, versus natural environmental factors we would see low levels as well in those really strong tolerant varieties. Varieties that are more susceptible, of course we have higher higher incidence across the ear, a greater percentage of that whole ear is infected and usually those transpire into very high levels of dawn in our grain at harvest yeah. and uh, that would be a factor that we would want to definitely select against the best we can and make growers aware of maybe the susceptibility that it entails with choosing that hybrid for their operation. Yeah. 
Final question for you, and that is, hey, um, you know, uh, it is, you know, getting near harvest. We're, we're, we're moving through on the black layer. Um, what are you telling growers this year about gibberella and ear rots when it comes to sort of, you know, managing the crop through harvest? Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no substitute for eyes on ears, right, mm -hmm. Bern? Uh, being out in the field, being aware of the pressures that we have, um, identifying the risk. If we have a field that was very uneven, maybe we have late emergers. Look for those tight husks, those plants that aren't doing as well and don't have that full potential. Those are the ones that are most likely to show that uh, ear mold development. And of course, if we have a concern, we're gonna wanna get after it. Yeah. We wanna get that out of the field sooner than later. We wanna get it dried and conditioned and minimize the risk of those dawn levels rapidly increasing from further adverse weather conditions later in the growing season. Yeah. So we know we can keep things under control if we harvest early and get it off and get it dried. Yeah. Well, hey, let's hope for some sunshine, some dry weather through harvest and, and lower levels. I always appreciate you taking some time for Corn School. Yep, thanks, Bern. Thanks.